Praise the Lord, dear friend. Thomas Matthew the fourth, God's success strategist, his prophet to the nations, and your pastor, prophet, and intercessor, uh, mentor, and coach, and uh, teacher, and trainer for great things in the kingdom of God. I want to tell you, um, I've been speaking about power, God's secrets according, you know, of his power and a lot of people don't understand these things because they're not walking in them. When you begin to get revelation and you begin to have a hunger and a thirst for good things, you begin to walk in it. If you're not walking in it yet, it's because you don't value it enough yet. Anything, anything you get hungry enough for, you're going to get it. Because when you hunger and thirst for righteousness, you're going to be filled. When you hunger and thirst for something good, you're going to get filled. Well, let me get right into it. In the book of 1 Kings, chapter 3, this is volume 4, Secrets of God's Power, volume 4. I heard the Lord speak to me, and I love it because when I come to you, it's fresh from, fresh from heaven. Uh, or else, you know, we could all do things like so many people do, but... Not a lot of spark and excitement and heavy anointing on it, heavy glory on it, but when God gives me the thought, this cute baby's walking in and making me laugh. Hey, uh, Landon, bless you, man. I heard you're in LA, so my prophecies come to pass. Our friend called me yesterday. We had a nice conversation. It was a long time since we talked. And he said, surely you're in Los Angeles. I said, well, I told him that prophetically. God spoke to me not knowing a thing about Los Angeles and you're there. Big things are going to happen. The next season is on. It's switched on. I've been speaking about Secrets of God's Power. This is volume four. Uh, it was one on the miraculous. Number one. Number two was about wisdom. Number three was about... Uh, you'll have to look it up if I remember. Oh, it was about the vision statement and about uh, being empowered for service. That was yesterday. So these are four days in a row. Today is volume four, the fourth day I'm doing this series. I'm doing this daily. And the Lord said to me uh, today, he said, hey, uh, my son, I want you to talk about wealth creation, one of my favorite topics. I'm just, it's just such an awesome, awesome topic. And uh, hello there, everybody that's coming on. Be sure to share this afterwards. God bless you for being with me. I see your name and face here. I'm glad you're here. Solomon. Uh, I, I want to talk about Solomon. Solomon was just not an anomaly to be a one-off or a person that, you know, had so much and did so much. And it's all just a story we read about him. No, it's, there are principles in his life that we can also apply. Number one, he had a good father. So you have a father here, Thomas Manton IV. Or you may have another father. I also have fathers in the Lord. I don't just have one, I have several. And these are real apostles, men that have broken through, kingdom men. Because you can receive grace and things from them that you don't have to fight the battle they fought. They've already gone ahead. So you're smart if you connect with a person who's anointed. Let me just say that. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm also doing that. And you can also do that with me. So, because I've fought a lot of battles. I've been a lot of years through doing a lot of things, through, walked through a lot of things, conquered a lot of things, many things. And I have strength and licensure. That's the word, look it up. Licensure from heaven to... I'm not even going to take time to spell it because I want to preach. Okay, let's go. Licensure from heaven to, uh, you know, help you connect with heaven in a, in, a, in, a, in a glorious way. Now, Solomon was the son of David. David's prayers, we see, uh, the scripture says they're ended in Psalm 72. The last verse of Psalm 72, the prayers of David, the son of Jesse, are ended. Now, uh, David could not build a temple, so Solomon was there. He said, I'll build it. But David said, I'll go and get the money to build it if I can't do it. Since you say there's too much blood on my hands, I'll go shed some more. He said, David said, he'll go shed some more and um, pay for it. What kind of attitude was that? You can also have that aggressive nature and attitude. 
You know, poverty is accepted by people and it shouldn't be. Prosperity needs to be accepted and then you got to fight and pursue and get into it. Now, in 1 Kings 3, which brings me right to Solomon, I want to say again, Solomon is an example. David's an example. Jacob and Isaac and Abraham are examples. Job's an example. Not for the bad thing he went through, but for the victory that he attained and the wealth that he attained again. He was the richest man in the East. He lost and then he became the richest man again. This is the nature of God. So in 1 uh, Kings uh, chapter 3, the Lord said here, um, you've done this great thing for me, Solomon. Again, for a time, you know the scripture. You can read it yourself. I, I'm, I, don't want, I, I can't be on here all day. I'm trying to get shorter and shorter in minutes that more and more people can watch in their busy schedules. I really have an outset goal of like 25 minutes. Sometimes I've looked at the time afterwards. It's been 30 minutes, 35, 41 minutes, something like that. I'm trying to get it, everything to 20, to capsulize this all into a 25 minute thing. If I can, you know, sometimes I'll go a few minutes more and it's okay, it's the Lord uh, doing that, but I wanna just get it tight. So I'm not gonna read you the whole thing. You can read the story. Because you've done this great thing for me, God said, and you've not asked for long life for yourself or riches for yourself, he didn't even ask for riches for himself, but he got it. Imagine, because he pleased God. God gave him. Think about it. And you're not asked for the life of your enemies, but you've asked for yourself understanding. You want understanding to discern and do justice. Then, behold, I'll, I, I will do according to your words. And I've done according to your words. And I've, gi I've given you, and I'm giving you, and, I'm, and I have given you, and I'm giving you a wise and understanding heart so that there's not been anyone like you before you nor shall anyone like you arise after you okay there's a scripture that says solomon broke the mold and he was going to be greater than anybody but he's still the example for us don't tell me you can't emulate the power of faith that david had or the power of wealth creation or the desire to have understanding don't tell me you can't ask god for that now you're not going to be the king solomon but you could be, you could be, have some of the things that he had and some of the attributes that he had. And he had, he had too much and he had too much in the hundreds of billions. So carve off a few zeros of that and take that. You'll be a multi, multi-millionaire. Maybe you'll touch a billionaire, one or two or three, but he was in the hundreds of billions worth of stuff. So no problem. The Bible says almost $4 billion was laid at his feet in 1 Kings 10 in one year's time. You don't have to have four billion dollars of gold to be rich today. You can have several million dollars, a hundred million dollars, you're doing well. You could buy the house you want, you could buy, you could live pretty well on that, okay? So don't think that Solomon is the only one that ever was and nobody could be, you may not match him, but you could try to catch up. You getting it? And this is a secret that I'm telling you of God's power concerning superabundance and wealth creation. That's what I'm talking about right now. And stop thinking poor, and stop thinking you just have to get enough few thousand, some thousands of dollars, here and there, thousands of dollars, tens of thousands even if it's a bit more, or maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars, which you think is like the highest level ever, it's not. And that's just your life. And you gotta pay your bills, and then you gotta get more again, replenished, to pay more and live and survive, and you're always worried about money, thinking about money, pressured about money. You got bill collectors, debt collectors, and everyone else calling you, it's nonsense. You're paying interest on your credit cards. You, you don't have enough to have them zeroed out all the time. You need cash money to do that. And I wanna to prophesy to you, Cancha la boteque, say, I feel the anointing. God is big enough to get you in the position where you have a lot of cash, a lot of business, a lot of proceeds, a lot of provision, a lot of good things. Don't worry so much about how it's gonna come, how it's going to get to you. Just know that you're going, it's going to get to you. You're gonna to get to it, it's gonna to get to you. Say amen. That starts there. Don't say, well, how, I wonder what. You see, you're killing, your, you're killing the prophecy right there. You see, someone said, can a prophecy be killed? Some people are so religious that they think because like a word was spoken, you could do anything, jumble it around, upside down, mess up in your life, don't have faith, don't be diligent and aggressive and all that. And you think, well, 
God's spoken, so it just has to happen anyway. No, you can delay things. You can deny things. You can derail things. Hello, I'm preaching here. You could distract things. You could mess up the whole plan of action by not uh, have, living according to faith. I know one apostle, he, millions of dollars go through his hand on a regular basis. He's the one of the most phenomenal, phenomenal, the most anointed men that I know in our generation. And we're connected, and I see him often. And uh, he talks about the gift of faith a lot, because he needs that to press through to the higher level. He's living above the natural. You say, how, do you, how does a man like that have like 100 employees, churches around the world, flies private, goes to cities, one, two, three, arranges everything himself, has a whole entourage and teams that fly with him. You need a lot of money. You really need millions of dollars to do that. But that's what he needs to carry the move of God with all his people and all his work the way he does it. And it's working. He's winning souls into the millions. He's been given television time. He's very organized, he's very serious, very committed, very diligent, very strict, very conservative in his uh, ways he does things because he's protecting the move of God and moving in it. It's not by accident that he has it, is what I'm trying to say. It's not by accident that anyone has anything. You have to make a decision. So a secret, first of all, of wealth creation is that you have to... Oh my God, I tell you, this is annoying. I just love how this, it's like a machine inside of me, it just switches on. And I start speaking and it's just like a river of the glory coming through me. I feel the anointing. Right now, receive the touch of heaven to understand and discern his secrets and supernatural power to get wealth. You know, it talks, the scripture talks about power. This message is about power, secrets of God's power. I'm talking about God's power, dunamis power, mighty power, according to Acts 1.8, according to Deuteronomy 8.18. Mighty power, according to this here in so uh, the life of Solomon, First Kings chapter three. Where am I now? Verse. Oh, give me a verse. I can't see the number. I'm in the nine chapter uh, eleven. Uh, eleven. So he says, "I've given you all this because you did something great for me." You read, read the whole chapter, find out what it was that Solomon did. It's good to you. It's good for you to open the Bible and read too. Read it. Take time and read it. He says, I've given you, the Lord said in verse 13, 1 Kings 3, 13, I am also giving you for what you've not asked me for. And number one is riches and honor. If you have riches, you'll get honor from somebody because people honor and respect riches. As we said, people are reverers of success. So are we. If you've broken through in an, in an area, you're, you deserve to be heard. You deserve to be noticed and recognized, even to be honored, because you've done something. You've achieved something. You're a special person. I came out of my gym and uh, there was a nice McLaren 650S sitting there, you know, the supercar. And I just looked at it and thought, this is cool. Wow, who's is this? And sure enough, the Holy Ghost had the, had the owner walking out at the time I was there. And I began, we began to talk. Turns out he owns a lot of spas up in... Uh, a very wealthy resort for the rich in America, in the mountains, in the, in the, out in the west, in the, rock, uh, the Rocky Mountains, you know, where the, where the snow places where the rich go. He owns a lot of spas there, and he's a millionaire, you know, lives in the tropics and also out there and has businesses and got in the car. He says, yeah. I said, how do you fit in that thing? They're a bit too small for me. He goes, and he was tall also. He said, this is the one I can get into. He said, I can't really get in a Lamborghini too well. Can't get into a Ferrari hardly at all. So, but I saw this McLaren, and it seems that I can fit in it very well. It just kind of works, and the, the gold wing doors come up. And, and, he, and I said, but there's no sunroof. I looked at the top, you know, it's just my quick imagination. Is that I really like sunroofs in cars. My Range Rover has one I really like. And uh, I love sunroofs. My Mercedes have one, and my S Mercedes have one, uh, S63. It has one, and I like the, I like it. So he goes, well, no, it's a convertible. So we hit the button, psh, thing unfolds, bang. Now he's supercar, convertible driving, takes off, mm, the car went. 
I thought, my lord, man. People will notice him. I said, what do you do? That's what I said. What do you do? The first question I said, what do you do? I own spas. By the way, coming out of a good, out of an upscale gym, he says, I own spas. You know? I take care of the rich. You know, they charge big money. That big, big, uh, big ticket items, big receipts coming through there, big money coming through there. And he's enjoying it. I wouldn't drive one of them supercars in the snow, so he's driving it in the tropics, you know. As that here in the house and the house and everything over there, you, know, you got to be doing something. So, of course, it's like, but like, what if he was a guy that had a, a dented up, kicked in, sun oxidized, paint falling off, bumpers falling off, piece of junk, and just looked like wearing some ripped t-shirt and funny shoes and looking like, you know, like, like, just, you know, you wouldn't say, what do you do? Because you might say, I'm looking to do something. You know, the, the, are you getting my point? The question wouldn't be there. Or well, not worth asking. So number one is a mindset. Here's a secret. Here's a secret for you. You have to renew your mind and stop thinking that poverty is any good because it's totally rubbish. <clears throat> so it's a result of the curse. And if you have any good sense, you despise it. And if you see anybody that has anything good, right away something clicks on you. Not that, it doesn't mean you're materialistic or lustful for things. It doesn't mean that. It just means you're just uh, an honorer of, honorer of success. And nice things are nice. God, listen. See, so you have to get that mindset, all right? You see something good and all that, you don't start asking how much it costs and why do they have that? Does it take all that? Do they need that? Why do they have that? How did they get it? Are they a crook? Are they... See, when those thoughts start going through your mind, you got this poverty, demonic thing in you that you have to cast out. That's a secret. Another secret is that you, you feel a positive, not a negative when you see something good. A big house, a wealthy person, a beautiful car, nice clothes, elegant things. You don't start sneering at it. If you have that spirit of sneering at good things, you're, you're literally disrespecting that nice thing. And that nice thing will stay far away from you. I had a young lady one time work for our ministry years ago. And she says, we were talking about cars and all that. She says, oh... I, I don't like Rolls Royces and all that. You like them? I said, they're great. Why not? Beautiful handcrafted car. Nothing wrong with it. Well, I don't like all that. I said, well, dear, don't worry your pretty little head about it. She was very pretty, by the way. She was. I said, don't worry your pretty little head about it, dear. You'll never have one. She looked at me puzzled like, what? I said, well, you're disrespecting it by talking bad about it. That thing doesn't want you to sit in it. If, if the car could talk, uh, this is a secret now, it's a revelation, I'm saying. If the car could talk, you got near it with your sneering attitude, you'd be like, ooh, no, don't come near me. You know the old saying, if walls could talk, if the dog could talk, if the cat could talk, of everything they've seen, you know what I mean? If walls had ears and mouth to talk, or eyes to see and they're able to, you know. So everything has ears, everything has a temperament. All things have ears. I'll prove that to you scripturally. Remember Jesus spoke to the tree? And the disciples thought, Jesus, are you okay? And they thought, one of them might have thought, maybe the grape juice fermented. He's a little bit, you know, A little bit tipsy, nipsy. So, but he wasn't. He was speaking in the spirit and faith. And they came back by the same way. Some hours or the next day or whatever. And all of a sudden, they were shocked and amazed to their utter amazement. The tree was dead because Jesus spoke to it. So that tree was able to hear him. It's another secret of God's powerful wealth. Living in abundance and wealth creation generation and living well, living high, living rich in this world. Everything has ears. You have to be respectful toward it. I have God doing deals for me and bringing me things that it doesn't even make sense. I can't even talk about it. 
I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to say details. I know everybody would like to know. Inquiring minds want to know. But, as they say, but no, I'm not telling. But it's just a, it's, it's a result of prophecy. It's a result of us praying and declaring. It's a result of us, uh, of me believing in faith that these things are coming. And God said to me, I want you to be wealthy, my son. I've ordained it for you. So God arranges the things that it happens. I'm in the ministry full time. People ask me, like, are you a business? They marvel. They think, are you, you're a businessman, right? I'm like, I want to tell them no. Yeah, I'm business minded. I'm, I don't want to disrespect the business order by saying I'm not, you get my point? I'm not going to make a confession saying I'm not. But what I, what I can say is I don't take my time in life to do business. I take my time in my life 100%, 100% to do ministry. And the business comes by in the spirit, by spiritual means, by faith, by... I'm just think I'm just, I'm just stopping, pausing for a minute. I'm marveling at God, you know, he does it. So this is a secret. You, got, you have to build up your mindset and mentality. God's had me speak a lot along those lines. Even over the years, I, I'm teaching people how to get the mindset for wealth, the generation of good things. You need to have it. You got to work on yourself. So you do that. That's a homework assignment for today. Work on yourself. Any negative thing you've ever said about anything glorious, splendiferous, rich, wealthy, opulent, elegant, repent and say, sorry, God, I shouldn't have said it. I didn't understand. I had somebody say to me that they don't care about cars. And they don't care about the make and the model. And they were getting annoyed that, you know, a couple of men were talking about cars and all the models and all that. And they, they actually voiced a complaint. And then you look at the car that they have. Go figure. Not a nice car. Not a, not a super elegant. Not a super car, that's for sure. Not a luxury car, that's for sure. Par for the course. So the Lord had me working on them, doing some coaching, getting some mind set up, expectation levels, renewing of the mind for bigger things. He said, the car is coming, you're going to have it. And then they'll say, oh yeah, I want it. So you see how people are, you know, have different things going on. You ha it's okay, you might have come from a lot of sources, but you need to work on that now. I'm speaking to you here as Papa in love, loving on you. Not a critical bone in my body of anything. I don't care. I just want to help people. I just want to see people get blessed. I want to hear that you're blessed. I want to see that you're driving the best, living the best, and smiling about it. God wants to do that. So whatever it is that came along the way, that's usually from the devil, from the other side somewhere, you got to catch a hold of that, lasso it, you know, throw the rope like, you know, when the cowboy's chasing the cow, and he goes, he throws the rope around it and then pulls it down and steps on it. He said, I got you. You got to take the thoughts captive. Let me teach you the Bible. Another secret, 2 Corinthians 10, 3, 4, and 5. Taking every wrong thought captive and casting it down. Every vain imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ. And, and I want to tell you what that, what that can mean. Anything that exalts, for the weapons of a warfare are not carnal, carnal they're not natural but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds so I want to tell you anything that exalts itself against good living big things abundance is against Christ you know why I'm in the Bible I'm in the Bible 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 because it says if you're Christ then you're Abraham's seed and he didn't say Abram's seed, he says Abraham. Because Abram, before he got the touch of the covenant from Jehovah, and God put H in the middle of his name, and took him from being Abram to being Abraham. <laughs> you have to say it like that in the Hebrew. Abraham, Jehovah. Sarai was like a domineering woman. I at the end of her name. Me, me, my. I, I, I. Sarai. She was a crazy woman. God took the H at the end of his name, Yahweh, 
Jehovah. <laughs> and put it in her and uh, at the end of her name and then she had the testimony she had the testimony that uh, she bowed her knees a submission came in her to call her husband Lord so she became a good woman she was a sharp lady businesswoman very strong and she had that nature and that was good for business good for her maybe for a minute but and the nature of God came in her and she got the spiritual glory to even call her husband Lord of the house. Imagine. But she wasn't doing that before very much. And Abram was his father. They were from the Ur of Chaldees, moon worshippers, weird kind of people. Worshipping idols, moon, worshipping the moon. The people of the Chaldees, of the Ur of Chaldees, you are. It's in the scripture. You see it in... Uh, Genesis 11, 12, 13 in there. Yeah, you know, they were not... Terah, you know, was his dad. You know, they were the way they were. But God made covenant with Abram and put his own name in his name. And then he became more rich. Genesis 13, 2. Abram became Abram. Not Abraham. Abram. After he had that connection with God in the beginning, got connected walked with God, started walking with God to a land where God would show him, away from his father's house, started walking with God, and then he became very rich. And then, that's in the 13th chapter in Genesis 13 too. Then the 15th chapter of Genesis, we begin to see the revelation of Jehovah Jireh, the God who sees our future and will see to it that it happens. In other words, he'll cause wealth to come to us, provision for the vision. Um, determination and also decision making and also wealth and provision and substance for the fulfilling of our destiny it's powerful what I just said play it back, I'm not repeating it play this back, share this with everyone watch this again, you need to watch this again the Lord is speaking some very profound truths here and um, then he had that covenant time when God walked amongst the animals in the sacrifice and Solomon had the same thing he was in a sacrifice and then he got blessed so you know look at the pattern there so I want to say what's the offering that you can bring God what's that ceremony that you can do for your first fruits or an offering or or have a you know donation service you know what what can you do into the anointing it's going to make God come and react. Well, look at the pattern in the Bible. Abram had it, and Solomon had it, and David certainly had it, and the others had it. Isaac, Genesis 26, and further on in Genesis 20, verse 12, said in the same year he was having trouble, he decided to sow, and in the same cycle of time, the same year, the same season of time, he reaped back a hundredfold. Doesn't happen for everybody. But you got to get the pattern of what these men did. So you got to begin to do what they've done if you want to have what they had. You have to do what they've done if you want to have what they had. If you want something you've never had, my dear mentor says, you got to do something that you haven't done yet. Here's another secret. Those are all secrets. Here's another secret. Ephesians 6, 8. Whatever thing you do for another, the same the Lord will do back for you. Good or bad. But let's, let's accentuate on the positive. Let's emphasize the positive. But also in the negative, you do bad. You, you know, what goes around comes around. Even the world says it. They call it karma. You know, this Eastern kind of word. But it's not that. It's sowing and reaping. You know, you do bad, you get bad. You're sowing a bad seed, you're going to get a bad harvest back. You take a bad action against somebody, it's going to come back to you. So be sure to love everybody. Here's another secret. The scripture says, follow peace with all men. Follow peace with everybody. Follow peace with everybody. Don't argue, don't strive, don't fight, don't get angry. If you get angry, don't sin. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Deal with it in the same time, same hour that you're having the problem. Forget about it and keep moving. Forget about it.
keep moving. Be lighthearted, be happy, continue to keep your joy and your peace. That's another secret. Your confidence level up because you're in the presence of God. When you're in the presence of God, all things work well. So, so, God, so then verse 15, Solomon awoke. Oh, he said, he said, you walk in my ways and keep my statutes as your father David did. And this he's learning from the Papa. Then I'll lengthen your days. And then Solomon woke up. He awoke, woke up, and indeed it had been a dream. You know, he was so tired from doing the ceremony. I just, what I kind of discerned from reading the scripture, but I saw it in a picture, so I've got it from my imagination. The scripture doesn't say exactly when he went to sleep, was he tired or what, but in a dream, which meant he was so tired, I believe he was so tired from doing the sacrifice, from doing this righteous thing before to, to God as a worship and an offering, that he fell deep asleep and God did not wait till he woke up to come and give him the answer and give him the harvest. Imagine. This is one of the best messages you'll ever hear in your life right here. It's a masterpiece. My God in heaven. Thank you for this Holy Spirit. Wow. He didn't wait till he woke up to come and bless him. And they kept offering burnt offerings. You know when you see a good thing, keep at it. Keep doing it. <laughs> Welcome everyone that's coming on. Share this. I want to go over to uh, I want to go over to 1 Kings 10 and I want to talk about a woman, the Queen of Sheba who was brilliant. Let's go to verse 1. Now when the Queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to test him out with hard questions. So she came with a great train, retinue, great, you know, group of camels and carts and all that. And they had spices and very much gold. Do you like gold? I like gold. Because gold is enriching my life. <laughs> oh, I like gold. Gold is good. Some say gold is good. G-O-O-D. Put the L in the second O. G-O-L-D. Take one O out. You get God. Take the D and the O out of good and you get go. The first two letters of God is go. First two letters of good is go. First two letters of gold is go. That's another secret. So you have to, uh, oh, this is great. You have to go, you have to be moving. So he came with, she came with a huge offer and very much gold and precious stones. And she spoke with him about many things and all in, in her heart. And then Solomon answered her questions with the wisdom that God had given him. And she fell out. She just collapsed. She just was breathless. She just was amazed. And when she saw the splendor of all of his people, read this, 1 Kings 10. I'm not going to read it verse by verse. But time, you read it yourself. Get in the Bible. Get in the Bible and read it. That's your homework assignment. And he said, happy are your servants. And all the beauty and all the beautiful stuff, harps and singers in the king's house, and all great wealth, great wealth, great wealth. And the 14th verse says, the weight of gold that came to Solomon yearly was 666 talents of gold, which is almost 4 billion U.S. dollars of gold at his feet that came to him in a year. And they made shields and things hammered with gold. Come on, read it. First Kings 10. Another secret. You have to meditate on that to get the mindset for that. And again, the devil will not like it, and maybe something in you will want to try to fight this new mindset, which is God's mindset, and say, well, who do you think you are? Am I going to wear gold? Who said wear gold? You're going you to look like a, one of these cheap rappers. They got a, a few bunch of money in their hand. They squander it, and they look all stupid, wearing like a $100,000 chain around their neck, looking all goofy. Who walks around with that on there? You don't have to do that. You can have it in your account and use the money to invest more and to buy things that you need for the work. I was saying in volume three of this yesterday, yesterday, just yesterday, wow, one day ago. Volume three in the secret, Secrets of God's Power here, this series. Volume three, everything we do is for service. God's anointed us for service. Everything we get is to help us serve more. You know your own heart. Now, here's another secret. You have to crush this demon 
that tries to tell you that this is materialistic. Because it's not. It's in the Bible. In the Bible. Bible, 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 Bible. Bible, 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 Bible. Black on black. Look at that. The Bible. I got this. Uh, I hate the white screen behind it. So I did the dark, the black one with the white lettering. It's really beautiful to read. And it's in the uh, Bible app. You get the app, Holy Bible app. I think it's the U version or whatever. It's a really great. And read, and read, and read, and read. And let me tell you something. In every book of all 66 books in the Bible, well, almost probably every, nearly every chapter in the 1,189 chapters in the Bible. That's 1,189 chapters in the Bible. Maybe not every one of them, but almost. You'll find something to do with finance. Something to do with good living. Something to do with a blessing. Something to do with a supernatural occurrence of, you know, appearances of angels and prophecy and revelation and all these kind of things. You know, something good from God being created for us, his own sons and daughters, his own kings and queens. Lord, I'm amazed. Look at this. Look at the number, 818. I don't know if you can see it backwards. 818. Yeah. Deuteronomy 818. And the time is 818 on the phone there. I love that. So replay this, man. I am I am just like amazed at the, the, the virtue that's in me and that's coming out of me. It's going right into this uh, recording. Replay this, replay this. I may even do a part B, a part two of this one on wealth. Yeah, I think I will. I'm not done here. I'm not done with this. Father, in Jesus' name, let's work on the mindsets of your people. Let people begin to not think that anything opulent, elegant, beautiful is bad, but it's good. Like I said, you drive a junky, scratched up, banged up, piece of junk kind of car that didn't even worth a thousand dollars, you know, or five thousand. No one's gonna even want to greet you. Hey, Rita. How are you, dear? I'm teaching again here. Bring some explanations of some good things. Glad you're on board, glad you're watching. I saw your pictures, amazing place there. Say hi to John for me, please. Please say hi to the beloved one. We have to get together soon. It's time coming. We really pray this year it has to happen. We'll have to arrange it. I'm not right now, I'm not this minute, I'm, I'm hooked up really, really heavily, but later on, we'll, we'll get to it, we'll get to see each other, that'll be great, looking forward. So, uh, the mindset, the mindset, so many mindsets, you have to begin to break those things. So again, if someone has something really great, and that, you know, again, sometimes you can feel that someone's going to have like their reaction in themselves. Well, you have to deal with that. When you see something beautiful and shiny and newer and costly and valuable and luxurious, everybody goes, wow, look at that. Why? Because God made it to be that way. And it's in the nature of man to have good things. God knew that. In fact, he arranged it to be made for us so we need to be the recipients and the receivers of it. We're kings and queens, we're kings and priests, not the Catholic priest. I mean, priests like a priestly element as a, represent, a representative of the Lord himself in his temple or out of his temple, wherever. Not from the religious order of that, you know, one, but just unto God. We're kings and, and ladies are queens, you know. I like these days when some men want to claim that title. Let me not get started on that. <laughs> That's disgusting. And totally aberrant and wrong. But the Lord has made us his own royalty. Meditate on that today. Share this with your friends. I love you. I'm coming back at you with a part two of this. I have to continue in this. And uh, Father, thank you for making this real to your servants and your sons and daughters and your friends. Make it real to them. 
Thank you for being my partner. You can do that on thomasmanton.com. We are going. We are updating the website. Um, it needs work. Forgive us that it's not where it should be, but it's getting there. I just, I, you know, it can be done. I just need the people. Maybe some great web person is out there would want to call me and say, I can help you. I'm ready. Call me. Call me. Get in touch. If you have prayer requests or you want to tell me anything, private inbox me. You can also WhatsApp me on the WhatsApp number. You can also send them Pesa in Kenya as an offering in Kenya. You can also use the Cash App. All the details will be in the comments section here. You could also do uh, through the website. And God is, is really into you living well. And you have to do something to connect with Him in a higher level. Look what Solomon did. Look what Solomon did. Look what David did. Look what Abraham did. Come on now. Nothing's for nothing. You're not going to get it just because you had a fleeting desire. You got to take diligent action. Another secret. I will talk to you on the next broadcast. I love you. I'm praying for you. Remember the great words of the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah 48, 17. I, the Lord, am your God. And I will teach you how to profit. And lead you in the way you should go. You'll be going in the right way with the right people toward the right thing. Them toward you and you toward them. Connecting, networking, new opportunities, upgrades. The Lord's been speaking prophetically about upgrades, 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 upgrades. Upgrades in every good thing and every good way. And we are going to see this happen in our own lives in Jesus' name. Talk to you later. I'm praying for you. Looking to hear from you. Get in touch in Jesus' name. Seize the moment. Have a great, 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 great day in Jesus' name. Amen.